My name is Mark Escobedo. I'm a senior sales engineer at Westpac and subject matter expert here to talk a little bit about accelerated aging from a test labs perspective. So the presentation is going to focus on ASTM F1980, the accelerated aging protocol. We're going to talk a little bit uh, about the principles of accelerated aging. So now let's dig into ASTM F1980 just a little bit, talking about time versus temperature. Now for the accelerated aging, that's the whole premise is that we're going to increase the temperature to shorten the duration of time that we're going to age these products. And we'll see that it's going to be very significant. But in the standard itself, it talks about temperatures higher than 60 C are not recommended. And that's due to the polymeric systems may experience nonlinear changes, changes in crystallinity, formation of free radicals, or even peroxide degradation. And what that means what we mean by nonlinear is that it's outside the realm of the material, that the material is degrading much faster and not in a predictable manner. So we, want, we, don't, we want to stay out of that. We want to stay within a range. So what would that range be? Well, typically the glass transition temperature. You can think about that. Glass transition temperature, the temperature that you age at, you should be below that so that you don't have any defects or false positives. So simply, the accelerated aging formula is just the accelerated aging time, your desired real-time aging, divided by an accelerated aging factor. So we call that AAT, accelerated aging time. That's the duration that it'll be in the chamber and the accelerated aging factor. So where do we get this accelerated aging factor? Well, a brilliant man, Arrhenius, he was initially a physicist, but became more known for his studies in chemistry. He came up with this fantastic formula that you see before you, where a 10 degrees C increase in temperature will act, you will get a two times acceleration in the function. So what this means is that you can create an accelerating factor and to reduce, and in this case, I said two times increase, but really by doing that, we're using it to reduce the time that we can actually age something. And here's how we're gonna do that. Accelerated aging factor equals Q10. This factor, Q10, is dependent on material type. Hey, that sounds pretty cool, but there is a very conservative factor that the standard uses, and we'll see what that is. Then we also have the accelerated aging temperature. This is gonna be the temperature that you actually age the packages or your product, depending on your scope. And then we have the storage temperature, and that is a range inside the standard from about plus 20 degrees C to plus 25 degrees C. So you can play with that within that range. Now, uh, I've heard a lot of discussion that your storage temperature, like that should be your storage temperature. However, it's very hard to predict what your storage temperature will be when you don't have control over that. So that's why they give you a range. So we're gonna use an example here, and Q10 equals two comes right out of the standard. So it's a very conservative number, and that's my point, is that you can change the Q10, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but the only way to change your Q10 would be to study your materials. And again, that's back to that, where do I see nonlinear changes? If you use an accelerated aging factor of plus 55 and a real-time uh, storage temperature of plus 25C, you get an accelerated aging factor of 8 using the formula above. Now, let's plug that into our last final formula, and you get the accelerated aging time of about 45.6 days. Well, we don't really uh, use that exact number, we use that as a minimum. So let's increase that plus one, 46 days. So imagine, you can get 12 months accelerated aging in 46 days. I think that's pretty cool. Now let's play with the room temperature a little bit. We got that range, remember 20 to 25 C? What if we dropped it down to like 23 C? Okay, well, keeping everything the same, just changing the room temperature, the accelerated aging factor changes from 8 to 9.2. Let's plug that into the equation. Now I get 12 months at 39.7 days. So that's 40 days. I have a six-day reduction 
just by changing that room temperature, the delta, that's what I'm doing, I'm changing the delta from my aging temperature to my room temperature or storage temperature by two degrees C, and I can save six days. Hey, that's getting pretty good. I can also increase temperature. So if I'm at plus 55, that's what our examples are, what happens if I go to plus 60? So you can see, we can play with these numbers a little bit. Now I wanted to illustrate in this example, Q10 of three. So what that means is that my, the, the sample that I can age, I've studied my materials and I've determined empirically that that number can be a three. If I keep everything the same, 55C, and notice I'm back at 25C for my room temperature, I get an accelerated aging factor of 27. Last time it was eight. Plug that into the equation. Now I can get my accelerated aging time down to 13 and a half days. So in this example, this would be very aggressive. Changing your Q10 to a three becomes very aggressive, but if it works out, you can do the aging in 13 and a half days for 12 month period. And we can do this for a, a whole host of different uh, time periods, right? Uh, typically it's like uh, six month, one year, and three year. Those are the common types. And actually in the life of medical device, if you have to go to five years, that's a lifetime. So let's kind of put this all together in a table. So if we keep our desired real time at 12 months and our aging temperature at plus 55, you can see at 1.8 it yields these day, uh, this duration. At two, this is the most common at 39.72 and 45.63, so we call it 40 and 46 days. And at three, we can get it down to 11 and 14 days. So this is an illustration how if we study our materials, we can actually uh, change the Q10 and that could be used to our advantage. But we don't do that. And so one of the challenges I would like to put out to people in the medical device world who make materials is how can we get better data on our materials to see if we can change the Q10? And then we can all follow that as we're doing our validations. And at this point, I think I'm, I've kind of uh, let the cat out of the bag and kind of uh, told you all the, the answer. But of, in order to change your Q10 value, you must study the materials, identify any nonlinear changes that occur, and stay below that area, and then look for these changes in, in crystallinity and such. So what I'd like to kind of leave you with a little bit here is to define your test parameters, determine the needs and requirements for the materials being tested. And is this gonna be a package test or a product test? Uh, and that kind of leads into deciding what your intended purpose is. Uh, we're an independent test laboratory for mechanical environmental testing, focusing on these industries. ISO 17025 accreditation means that the data that we produce is accurate and reliable, and we're 100% employee-owned. Thank you for your time.